SpaceX has formally sent a letter to Congress protesting the FAA's Falcon 9 sanctions and criticizing the agency's recent actions. Will the issue be resolved soon? Meanwhile, Rocket Lab's final electronics mission was canceled shortly before liftoff, and ULA is preparing for its second Vulcan mission scheduled for next month. There's a lot to cover, so let's dive into these updates on today's episode of NR Studio. Subscribe, like, and share to stay in the loop. And thank you for your support as we get started. Recently, SpaceX took a bold step to address its concerns with the FAA by sending a formal letter to Congress. The letter highlights the company's frustration with the FAA's regulatory approach and specifically addresses issues affecting its operations. In X, SpaceX aired its grievances. For nearly two years, SpaceX has expressed concerns about the FAA's inability to keep up with the commercial spaceflight industry. The agency clearly lacks the resources to review permit documents in a timely manner, yet it also focuses its limited resources on areas unrelated to public safety. These disruptions continue to threaten national priorities and undermine the ability of American industry to innovate. In the post, SpaceX attached images of documents it submitted to Congress. The documents outline the company's major issues with the FAA's slow and outdated process, which SpaceX says is hampering progress in the commercial space industry. SpaceX has stated its commitment to safety, saying, SpaceX is absolutely committed to safety in all of its operations. On this issue, it's worth noting that in each case, SpaceX provided AST, the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation, with adequate notice of these relatively minor license renewals, which had no impact on public safety. The letter directly addresses two recent penalties imposed by the FAA. The agency has previously cited SpaceX for what it considers regulatory violations. In the case of the PSN Satria mission, the FAA accused SpaceX of using a new launch control room and removing boosters without first obtaining the necessary permits. For the EcoStar 24 Jupiter 3 mission, the FAA fined SpaceX for using a newly constructed rocket farm without first obtaining approval. SpaceX responded to these allegations in its letter, presenting detailed counterarguments and outlining the steps it has taken to comply with safety regulations. For the PSN Satria mission, SpaceX argued that regulations do not concern staging centers. They further explained, most importantly, that SpaceX performed a stop before loading propellant and then during the countdown, consistent with safe operations, and insisted that safety protocols were followed. Similarly, for the EcoStar 24 Jupiter 3 mission, SpaceX noted that it followed a previously issued FAA regulatory waiver that authorized the use of a new fleet of RP-1 propellant tanks during the Crew-7 mission. The company questioned why the waiver was not extended to the EcoStar mission, given that the FAA had previously stated that the use of the new fuel tank did not pose a health or public health risk. SpaceX noted that the FAA's waiver stated that the waiver agreement did not jeopardize public health and safety, the security of property, or the national security or foreign policy interests of the United States. In the broader context of its ongoing dispute with the FAA, SpaceX has raised concerns about the FAA's failure to effectively regulate the burgeoning space industry. In the letter, SpaceX has expressed concern for more than a year about the FAA's inability to keep pace with the commercial space industry and the needs of U.S. government agencies that rely on commercial spaceflight capabilities for national security and national interests. These comments reflect broader criticisms leveled at the FAA, not just by SpaceX, but also by industry leaders, legal experts, and academics. They argue that the FAA's regulatory framework is outdated and unable to adapt to the fast-moving commercial spaceflight industry. As SpaceX points out in its letter, it has been clear for some time that the AST lacks the resources to review licensed documents in a timely manner, misdirects its limited resources on public safety regulations, and has failed to modernize and improve its regulations. One of SpaceX's primary criticisms is the FAOA's inconsistent enforcement of its regulations. The company notes that missions involving government agencies, such as NASA, tend to face fewer delays or challenges, while commercial missions appear to face greater scrutiny. This selective approach, SpaceX argues, creates an unfair disadvantage for the company, which has been a critical player in advancing American aerospace leadership. 
Yes, with missions that serve NASA and the government, things are going better than other. SpaceX's contribution is critical to maintaining the nation's competitive edge in space exploration. Despite these challenges, SpaceX continues to play a central role in key missions, such as NASA's upcoming Crew-9 mission. Unlike other ISS missions, the Crew-9 mission is designed to launch only two astronauts, specifically to rescue two astronauts from Boeing's Starliner capsule left behind on the ISS after the Starliner CFT mission was delayed. As for the timing, NASA originally planned the mission for September 24th, but delayed it twice to allow for additional preparations. The latest launch window is now set for 2.05 p.m. on September 26th, with updates on September 27th and 28th. Mission astronauts Nick Haig and Alexander Gorbanev are scheduled to arrive at NASA's Kennedy Space Center on September 21st. What a special day. If you know, you know, it's my birthday. Without SpaceX and its Dragon spacecraft, NASA faces a serious challenge. Currently, there are no other viable options to rescue the two astronauts. While Russia could technically intervene, NASA would probably prefer to avoid that path. Musk highlighted the issue when he retweeted SpaceX's tweet and said, SpaceX is taking it to Congress. The FAA is spending its resources attacking SpaceX over trivial issues that have nothing to do with safety while ignoring the real safety issues at Boeing. This is simply wrong and puts people's lives at risk. NASA feels that Boeing's capsule is unsafe for astronauts to return and will go back to SpaceX if necessary. But instead of blaming Boeing for endangering astronauts, the FAA is blaming SpaceX for doing stupid things. Enough is enough. Musk's frustration highlights the challenges SpaceX faces from the FAA. While SpaceX continues to play a critical role for NASA, particularly in rescue operations, the FAA seems to be focused on the small stuff. Rather than addressing larger safety issues like the one involving the Boeing capsule, the FAA's delays are not only crippling SpaceX's Falcon systems, but they are also slowing down the progress of Starship, which could impact critical future missions, particularly those related to NASA's Artemis program. If these delays continue, the nation's space program, particularly high-frequency launches and exploration, could face serious setbacks. As we await the FAA's response to SpaceX's letter to Congress, one thing is clear. Reform is urgent. An agency that hinders national progress by allowing its competitors to advance must be held accountable. Will the FAA be reformed or face more drastic changes? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on SpaceX's journey. Now let's dive into the latest electronic delay update from Rocket Labs. On September 18th at 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Rocket Lab is set to launch five Internet of Things satellites for French company Pinesse. The countdown reached zero and the electrons in the stage motor appeared to light up, but then shut down very quickly, causing a power outage. Rocket Lab explained the situation by saying, because today's mission requires an immediate launch, we will refrain from any launch attempts today. The team is evaluating options for the next launch attempt, and we will share more information here soon. Fortunately, the rocket, launch pad, and payload remain in good condition. The launch window has been extended to 14 days, with the next attempt scheduled for September 20th from 7 p.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. ULA recently announced Via Volcano continues the legacy of the Atlas Fur as the world's only rocket with a high energy architecture and brings innovative new capabilities to meet the growing demands of space launches. However, there is an important caveat. General Kristen Pansenhagen, head of the U.S. Space Force's Space Access Assurance Program, said, I look forward to this second certification flight, but it's not immediate. If they have a clean flight, they automatically get certified. Component placement ULA remains optimistic about its future missions, which are critical to fulfilling National Security Space Launch contracts. If successful, ULA plans to launch two National Security missions, USSF-106 and 87, in late 2024. Meanwhile, ULA and Blue Origin appear to be taking advantage of SpaceX's Starship delay from the FA. Gaining an advantage by launching early raises questions of bias, as SpaceX's delay gives its rivals a competitive advantage. Clearly, removing these obstacles is critical to Starship's successful completion.
Regardless of who wins, maintaining America's lead in the global space race is important. We hope these obstacles are addressed soon, ensuring healthy competition and continued progress in the space industry. All right, folks, that's it for today's episode. 